Hi, thanks for dropping by. Yeah, when I looked at my channel this morning I noticed that I have 460 subscribers which is just absolutely amazing. So I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and I hope my content continues to offer you some interest. I have a three inch scale uh, traction engine which I built over many years. Unfortunately at the moment we're in the coronavirus lockdown so no steam rallies, no club meetings. However I'm lucky to live in a very remote area. Uh, we're probably over a mile away from the nearest main road. So the other day we decided to have our first 2020 steam up. In this video we continue with the Lion build. The topic mostly concerns turning. So I thought I'd break things up a little bit and insert a few shots showing the traction engine in steam. Hopefully add a little bit more interest. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. So on with the show. So I've hit onto a little problem with the uh, frames. The frame material, or this, this bar here, is made from cold roll steel, which has a lot of internal stress uh, built up in it. So it's quite common if you take a bit of cold roll steel and machine one side away, you're relieving the stress on that side, but leaving the stress in the opposite side, so the material uh, starts to bend. And it can be quite significant. So it looks like what's happened is that when I've uh, machined the slot for the timber in one edge of this material just taking that material out has been enough to cause it, the beam to bend additionally drilling these holes for the rivets and driving in the rivets may have contributed to changing the stress in the in the material so they're both bent exactly the same so actually it probably wouldn't matter but I think I'd like them to be as straight as possible. So if I clap this opposite end down onto the surface plate, you can see there is quite a bit there. So I'm going to put some heat in to try and relieve that a little bit and try to get it to be straighter. So I'll clap this down as well, this end down as well. Okay, and we'll get the gas torch out.
Okay, well, still pretty warm, but we'll take the clamp off and see what we've got. Oh, it's a lot better. It's still a bit of a bend, but it's your talking thermos, really. I think we can live with that. Definitely worth doing. The line frames are coming on quite nicely now. So we've got all the horn plates done. These are partially fixed to the main frame at the moment. And uh, we've got this front brace uh, done. The next job is to look at the uh, rods that go between the horn plates. So if we take a quick look at some photographs, we can get an idea what they look like. So first of all I'm going to look at the uh, horizontal rods that go between the horn plates along the bottom. So I've took some measurements and I've done a quick sketch. And this is what we're going to be looking at doing. So it's uh, quite a nice straightforward uh, turning and milling job. Uh, it's quite slender so we need to take some care with that. So I've cut up um, some rods, um, I've left them 10 millimeters uh, longer so I can put a center in one end and then later on trim it to length. So the rods on the engine are unpainted so I'm going to do the same on the model. Although I noticed on some earlier pictures sometimes the rods are actually painted but anyway I think they look better unpainted. Uh, to save them from rusting I'm going to use stainless steel. So this is 303 stainless which is a nice free machining material so it shouldn't give us any problems. And I'm starting off with a 10mm diameter rod. So the first job is to turn these up. So let's get cracking. So I'm just going to put a couple of marks on as a visual reference. So this is the side that we'll have the uh, centre hole put in. So I've allowed 10 millimetres extra material. Put a mark 10 millimetres in. And add 13 millimeters, so 13.5. Okay, that should be good enough. So the first job is to uh, put the radius up to this uh, line here. Don't really need the tail stock at the moment to do that, so we'll get rid of that. Put in our radius and tool. Okay, here we go. Just take it easy.
Okay, so this is getting quite slender now, so I just need to be very careful. We'll get a size. I was thinking about the eighth of an inch, but I think I'll aim for 3.5 millimeters, slightly over. So at uh, 4.6, so just over a millimeter. So just take light cuts now. So that's a 0.2 millimeter cut. It should be 0.1 to come off. So yeah, point 0.1 to come off. We'll put on a point 0.05 cut. Okay. Check that, see what it's like. Three point five five, that's near enough. Okay, so we need to get access to further down the bar, so I always aim to tighten using the same, tighten and slack and using the same chucky position. Bring the, the uh, centre up and pull it back without rotating the bar, making sure, making sure that the orientation of the bar to the, to the chuck stays the same. So that should keep it pretty much concentric. We don't want to lose much concentricity. So we'll try it there. Let's back the centre off. Yeah, it's running pretty true. Not exactly perfectly true, but it's near enough. Okay. Yeah. Put a bit of pressure on. So I'm using a tool with quite steep um, clearance and rake angles on to reduce the cutting pressure because this is going to get very slender. <coughs> um, and so hopefully that will reduce the cutting pressure. Okay, so I'll take. Uh, from six cut, it's one point two on diameter. We cost it. Okay, we're very close now, so we need to try and blend it in. So we'll put a piece of white paper underneath. It's easier for me to see the gap between the tool and the work.
So I'll take a bit more, more air to cut. See what it feels like. A little bit more. Row four. Pretty much there. Just a touch. I think we're touching there. You can blend it in with a file later on, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Okay. Happy with that, that looks pretty good. I can see a slight mark, maybe I've gone slightly too deep. But as I say, it doesn't matter. Can't feel anything. And we can blend it in with a file. I'm okay. So the safety valves are starting to blow. So we'll close the damper. So that'll be a bit of excitement. Try it about there. Mm. Well, fairly concentric. Could be better, but never mind. I think we're okay there.
pretty good. Now 303 stainless steel does polish up very well. You can make it almost like a chrome looking finish with lots of polishing. But um, I want these uh, rods to remain a dull colour. So I think we'll settle for that. And we'll do some longitudinal uh, emery cluffing. Okay, that's them turned up. So I've got one for there, one for there. Nope, that's for there. That's slightly shorter than that one. So for the driving wheel to the trailing wheel, the uh, rod is slightly longer. Because this gap is slightly narrower. So that is a longer one, goes there, goes there, and I've got some for the ends as well, which have to be bent. So it just remains to uh, machine the rectangular section on each end Thanks for watching, see you next time